Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nowley again. Um, this is uh, the last series on the videos about the types of reactions and in this uh, series of videos I'm going to be talking specifically about redox reaction or oxidation reduction reactions. So if you remember uh, a couple of videos ago I discussed the definition of redox reaction and these are reactions where one reactant transfers one or more electrons to another reactant. And there's certain terminology you need to know for redox reactions, so when these are mentioned that you understand what they mean. The first one is the term electron donor. That's um, the, the reactant which actually loses the electron, so it's donating the electron away to another reactant. When a uh, reactant loses electron, we call that reactant oxidized. Okay. And electron acceptor is the opposite process, which is the reactant that gains electron. And when a elect, uh, reactant gains electron, we say it's reduced. So that's where the oxidation reduction term comes from, is, is due to these uh, uh, oxidized and reduced state of the uh, reactants after they lose or gain electron, respectively. There's uh, related terms as well, which are oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Oxidizing agent are basically a reactant that's causing another reactant to be oxidized. Okay, so if the oxidizing agent is causing another reactant to be oxidized, then it itself must be reduced because it must be the one receiving that electron. It's making the other reactant lose that electron oxidized. So the oxidizing agent itself is reduced. Reducing agent, on the other hand, is a reactant that's causing the other reactant to be reduced. So it's making a reactant receive electron, that means it itself must be losing electrons, so reducing agent is oxidized. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go through this little this simple example of a redox reaction to illustrate what's going on in this reaction and which species uh, loses electron and which species gains electron. Okay, so let's just balance this out real quick here. If we put a 2 over there and 2 over here, then we get a balanced equation. Uh, this is a, a reaction between sodium metal and chlorine gas, which if you put together will produce uh, salt, table salt, sodium chloride um, solid. And what we want to know is how does this um, become a redox reaction, in other words, which species uh, gives away electron, which species accepts electron. So the way we can understand what's happening in this reaction is to kind of think about what is the number of proton, what is the number of electrons each of these species has before and after a reaction. So you basically have two species here. You have sodium, okay. I would think about here, uh, cross this out here, sodium, and I would think about before reaction. In other words, as a reactant, how many electrons it has, and then after reaction. Okay, so before reaction, the sodium here is just sodium metal, and sodium metal basically is the elemental form of sodium, so the number of electrons it has is just the same as the number of electrons in the sodium atom. And if you look up the periodic table, you find that it has 11 electrons, because the number of protons is 11, that means that to balance it out, it has to have 11 electrons. Now, in the product form of sodium, we see sodium existing as sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound, and remember that in sodium chloride you have sodium existing as sodium plus and chloride as chloride minus. So if it's in the atom form, sodium has 11 electron. In the sodium ion, because it has a positive charge now, that means it's lost one of those electrons, so it only has 10 electron. Okay. We can go through the same exercise with chlorine. Again, if we look here, chlorine gas, Cl2, is really uh, the <clears throat> elemental form of chlorine. So in other words, the number of electrons each of these chlorine has is the same as the number of electrons in a chlorine atom, which is 17 electrons. Okay, So that's just the same as the number of chlorine atoms in the uh, um, in the uh, chlorine atom. The reason why we don't write it as just Cl is because Cl, the species, doesn't really exist in nature. What exists is this one. Okay, So that's why we write it as Cl2. 
but that's the elemental form of chlorine. After the reaction, you notice that it forms the chloride in sodium chloride, and we know the chloride ion has a charge of negative 1. So, as a result, um, because it has a charge of negative 1, that means it's gain one additional electron. One electron is negative 1. So then that becomes 18 electron. Okay? Now, from this kind of exercise, is pretty obvious, hopefully, that sodium has lost an electron. Okay? So it's losing an electron. If it's losing an electron, that means we say it's oxidized. Right? So sodium is oxidized in this reaction. And chlorine has gained one electron from 17 to 18. So we say it's reduced. Okay? And then we can inc incorporate those other terms that we learned earlier, which is, um, remember, we can also say that if uh, it's the reactant that's causing another reactant to be reduced, we call that reducing agent. So in other words, our sodium here is our re reducing agent, reducing agent, and then the chlorine gas in this case is our oxidizing agent, okay? You can use those term electron donor, electron acceptor as well again to refer to uh, these uh, species, okay? So that's how you would figure out how um, this particular reaction is actually a redox reaction. You do a count of electrons before and after a reaction and if there's a change in the number of electrons, then we know that that's a redox reaction, okay? So this was the example that we just did with sodium chloride from sodium and chlorine. That's a fairly straightforward example of determining which species is oxidized and which species is reduced. But it turns out that not all um, redox reactions are that simple. And a lot of times, especially with covalent compounds, you, it's really hard for you to know what's oxidized and what's reduced, okay? So, for example, uh, let's consider the following reaction. I'm just going to type it in here for now. Let's say you have the combustion reaction here between ethane reacting with oxygen to produce CO2 and H2O, okay? So, as it turns out, this is actually, I'm going to make it a little bigger here so you can see it. This turns out to be a, a, an actually a redox reaction, okay? But it's very hard to tell from here because if you want to know whether it's redox reaction or not, you have to know what is the number of electrons in carbon when carbon is bonded to four hydrogens. And that's not something that's easy to know because carbon and hydrogen are involved in covalent bonds. So it's not really easy to know how many of those electrons are actually part of carbon and how many of those electrons are part of hydrogen. Same thing here, the carbon and oxygen again is bonded together in covalent bond, but it's not clear how many of the electrons are actually on the oxygen, how many of the electrons are on the carbon. So in order to bypass this or to kind of get around this complexity associated with covalent molecules, we've developed a uh, concept that's useful to help us figure out oxidation um, state, which is just a, f a fancy term for how many electrons are uh, passed around in a redox reaction and who's getting oxidized and who's getting reduced, okay? So this concept is known as the concept of oxidation numbers or it's also known as oxidation states, okay? So, as I mentioned, as I wrote down here, this is really just a method that we use to figure out how many electrons are transferred uh, in a redox reaction from one reactant to another. And as I, said, as I said just now, it's fairly useful for covalent molecules because those are the type of molecules where we don't really, um, the electrons are not transferred from one, one a species to another. So if you think about something like sodium chloride, in the example that we had here, it's pretty clear that sodium has a plus one charge, chloride has a negative one charge. So the electron from sodium has been completely transferred to chloride. But in a covalent compound like CH4, that's not obvious. We don't know which 
of the two have the electrons because the electrons are being shared in a covalent bond. So the idea here is that we're basically going to assign uh, electrons to a specific species in a covalent molecule, okay? And that's based on the concept of electronegativity. We're not going to talk about electronegativity until we get to uh, later on in the semester. But right now, the only thing you need to understand is that when we have a covalent molecule like this, or a covalent molecule like this, one of the atoms usually tend to attract electrons towards itself more so than the other one. Okay, so in, the, in here, carbon and oxygen are sharing electrons to make a covalent bond. However, usually the electrons tend to um, go towards more of the oxygen than it does to the carbon. So as a result, in the oxidation numbers convention or rules, we would say that in carbon dioxide, all those electrons are going to be assigned to oxygen. So that gives oxygen a certain charge, like negative charge, and it gives the carbon a certain positive charge. Okay. One thing to remember is this is really completely, uh, of course, made up, right? In reality, the electrons are shared. However, this helps us tremendously, as you'll see uh, in the next video, in figuring out what electron is oxidized, I mean, what species is oxidized, and what species is reduced, okay? So in the next video, I'll discuss how to use the concept of oxidation number to figure out oxidation and reduction.